Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome again to Redeemer Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Griebel. And this video is a recording of the worship service of Redeemer Lutheran Church for Sunday, May 17th, 2020, which is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our service will be based on setting two of the divine service in the Lutheran service book hymnal. We turn now to our opening hymn, Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. Saints, the sight is glorious. See the man of sorrows now. From the fight returned victorious, every knee to him shall bow. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him. Crown him, crown him, crowns become the victor's brow. Crowns become the victor's brow. Crown the Savior, angels crown him. Rich the trophies Jesus brings. On the seat of power enthrone him while the vault of heaven rings. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown, him, crown the Savior, King of Kings. Crown the Savior, King of Kings. Sinners in derision crowned him, mocking thus the Savior's claim. Saints and angels crowd around him, own his title, praise his name. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him. Crown him, crown him, spread abroad the victor's fame. Spread abroad the victor's fame. Hark those bursts of acclamation. Hark those loud triumphant chords. Jesus takes the highest station. Oh, what joy the sight affords. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, King of kings and Lord of lords, King of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Hymn of Praise. The feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, Grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is taken from the 17th chapter of Acts. 
Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being." as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle comes from the third chapter of 1 Peter. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water." Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, 
not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In preparation for hearing the gospel, we join in the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in our next hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. <laughs> Not burst his three day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. But now has Christ arisen. Death's flood has lost its chill Since Jesus crossed the river Lover of souls from ill My passing soul deliver had Christ, who once was slain, not burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now has Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. But now has Christ arisen. 
My flesh and hope shall rest And for a season slumber Till Trump from east to west Shall wake the dead in number Had Christ who once was slain Not burst his three-day prison Our faith had been in vain but now has Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. But now has Christ arisen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the first reading appointed for today from Acts chapter 17, especially these words. He has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the text. Our text for today from Acts chapter 17 finds the Apostle Paul waiting in the city of Athens. For his safety, he has been brought to the city of Athens, we learn about before this text. And then he was told to wait there until his co-workers, Silas and Timothy, could uh, join him there in Athens. So what did Paul do? Rather than sit around and chafe during this time of waiting, Paul made the best of the situation. And it all started with him being provoked. What was he provoked about? He was provoked by all the idols that he found in the city of Athens, especially an idol to an unknown God. So he started engaging the people of Athens in conversation, first in the synagogue there with his fellow Jews, but then it spilled out into the marketplace and eventually led to the Areopagus, which was the height of Athens society, where all the philosophers would go to discuss things as we read. They always wanted to learn something new. And so Paul was invited to speak to the philosophers there in the Areopagus in the city of Athens. And he started and zeroed in right in on those idols. The idols had told him many things. The idols told them that they were very religious. They took their religion seriously. The idols told them that, told Paul that the people of Athens thought that God could be located in a specific place as they would stand before these idols or in these temples thinking that in this specific location in front of an idol or in a temple there they would be next to or close to God. And finally with their idol to the unknown God they wanted to cover all the bases and make sure they didn't leave any God out so that they could uh, be sure that especially make sure that no gods were angry with them. So that's what Paul started talking about in the city of Athens in the Areopagus. And then he proceeded to share the truth with them. He starts his speech in Athens by affirming who God is. God is the maker of heaven and earth. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. God does not need us to provide anything to him to live. In fact, he is the source of everything, including us human beings. Psalm 50 says the same thing. It says, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Idols, on the other hand, are very needy. 
Idols need someone, first of all, to make them as well as temples. They need someone to take care of them and keep them in good repair. Since they are not real and have no life in themselves, they need basically everything. Without human support, all idols would disappear. Not so with God. The very opposite is true. If we would all disappear, God would still exist. If this virus succeeds in exterminating and killing us all, as some days you wonder if it's going to, God would still be there. He is not subject to any of our weaknesses, any viruses or illnesses. He is. And so, even though, and so he needs nothing from us. That was Paul's first point in talking to the philosophers there in the Areopagus in Athens. Which then, of course, raises the question, if God doesn't need anything from us, what does he want from us? What does God want? And Paul has the answer for that as well. He says he wants everyone to repent. God is even willing to forget everything in the past. In the former days, he overlooked things. He's willing to do all of that. He just wants you now to repent. And he wants all people everywhere to do that. Because, as he says, he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The only way to be ready for that day when Jesus returns for judgment day is to repent of our sins and turn to Christ for forgiveness. It does not say that directly here in the text, but knowing Paul, we know that Paul also shared with them that it is through Jesus Christ and his death for us on the cross that all of our sins are paid for. Therefore, we do not need to hide our sins in any way. We can repent of them because we have confidence and know with all total assurance that for the sake of Christ, God will forgive us all of our sins. So that's what Paul did while he was waiting. He didn't waste the time. He took advantage of the opportunity to speak about his faith there in the city of Athens. Now, we are all in a time of waiting during this pandemic, during the stay at home or safe at home orders. We're waiting. We're waiting for the quarantine to be lifted so that we can get back to the new normal whatever that may be. So what are we going to do while we're waiting? We're gonna waste this time, or are we gonna look for opportunities to share our faith as Paul did? We heard in the epistle reading for today from 1 Peter chapter three. Peter writes, in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. And that's the very thing we see Paul doing here. He was not confrontational to the Athenians. No, he was gentle and respectful of what he saw there in the city. But nevertheless, he did defend and uh, was ready and prepared to talk about his faith. And I can assure you that God gives us opportunities even while we're waiting for this pandemic to be over. God will give us opportunities to tell others about our faith and witness for Jesus. Those opportunities don't always come at a convenient time. In fact, I've learned over the years that often they come at the most inconvenient time. When we apparent aren't really feeling ready that's why Peter says, always be ready. And actually, there's training opportunities to train us to be ready. As a matter of fact, here at Redeemer, we were getting ready to offer a class on training people to be ready to defend their faith on the very day that the quarantine started. The day that we were shut down and said, no more public worship services, that was the very day we were planning to start a training course to help people learn how to explain and defend their faith in Jesus Christ. Hopefully, at some point, we'll get to offer that class again, but for now, we have to wait. 
And so training is definitely important in helping us be ready, but also it's important for us to be observant, as Paul was, to observe the world around us. See what's going on in this world. Now the Apostle Paul, typically when he would go to a new city in his missionary journeys, he would go first to the synagogue because he knew he would find people there who were very much like him. They knew the Old Testament. He could start there with the Old Testament and explain to them how it teaches and gives witness to Jesus and how Jesus fulfilled everything that was written in the Old Testament about him. And the people would understand it. And so he had a natural starting point if he went to a synagogue because he knew the people there would know the Old Testament scriptures. But here in Athens, Paul knew that the people he was talking to had no clue anything about the New Testament or the Old Testament or anything in the Bible. So he had to take a whole different approach. Now, in some ways, the same situation exists today. Years ago, we could, in some, in most cases, assume that people had some knowledge of Christianity and maybe a little knowledge of the Bible, and we could maybe start there in explaining our faith. But sadly, that's not the case anymore. If we, in defending our faith, all of a sudden start spouting off a whole bunch of Bible verses, we'll lose people right away. So we need to take the approach that Paul does in starting with what people know the things around us in the world. Now, does this mean we stop studying scripture? No. We still need to know our Bibles. We still need to know the Bible because that's what reveals Jesus to us. So we still need to keep studying the word of God as part of our preparation to defend and explain our faith. But then we also need to look at what's going on in the world around us. And this time of quarantine gives us that opportunity to observe what's going on in this world around us, especially during the quarantine. How are people handling it? What's going on that's good? What kind of good has been brought out among people during this quarantine? How has this pandemic brought out bad things among people? And so that right there gives us an opportunity as we observe what's going on in the world around us during these very strange and difficult times. It gives us an automatic opportunity to start explaining our faith in the face of this pandemic. <clears throat> and as we do so, we want to make sure we share with people what Paul shared with the people of Athens. First of all, who God is. God is the source and maker of everything. He is the source of everything, and he doesn't need anything from us. If we were all gone, God would still be there. People need to understand that and know that. There is a God, and he is the source of everything and needs nothing from us. And secondly, the way to know this God, this eternal, all-knowing God, is in Jesus Christ. He is the way to know God. <clears throat> That's what Paul explained to the people of Athens. That's what we still are called to confess today. In the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, <clears throat> Jesus puts it this way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In the first chapter of the Gospel of John, John writes, no one has ever seen God the only son who is in the bosom of the father, he has made him know, has made him known. Also in John 14, Jesus says, whoever has seen me has seen the father. And again from John 14, he says, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. And not just tell people about Jesus, but then remind them that as Paul says to the Athenians, God is not encountered in some idol or some temple. <clears throat> now, we, I'm saying this right in the midst of a beautiful church building. But we encounter God in a person, not in a building, not in front of some idol. 
God is known in a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. He came into this world and took on our human flesh, became like one of us for the very purpose of making God known to us. And so God is known in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And it is only through Jesus, the one who died for us on the cross, that we will be ready for that judgment day which is to come. Because he has died for us and paid for our sins, when we stand before God on judgment day, we will be ready. We will have nothing to fear because Christ has paid for all of our sins and redeemed us and made us God's beloved children. <clears throat> now, as I said, in the city of Athens, some people believed Paul and some did not. Some invited him back to hear some more, and some said, fine, uh, we've heard you, we'll, let's go on to something else. The same is true today, and we have to be ready for that. We have to be ready for the fact that even though we believe with all our heart that Jesus is the way to God and the way to salvation, there are some still today who will not believe it. No matter what we say, no matter how much we're ready to defend our faith and explain it to people, some still will not believe, and we have to be ready for that as well. If it is God's will that they do not believe, we have to be ready for whatever the outcome is and entrust the outcome and the success or lack of success to God the Holy Spirit. And we also need to remember that since God does not need anything, our, but our neighbors do, and God wants us to serve our neighbors because and help with their needs. Not as a way to earn our salvation and to earn our way into God's favor, but as a thank you and out of gratitude to God for his blessings of salvation in Christ and forgiveness and eternal life. That is then what we, is our motivation to serve and help our neighbors who have some very real needs and God wants us to help with those needs. So waiting is not easy. This time of the pandemic, we all long for it to be over. But there will be opportunities to share our faith during this time of quarantine, during this time of waiting, and we need to be ready. Certainly by studying scripture, we can always learn more about God's holy word in our faith but also by studying the world around us, what's going on in this world, so that we can then share with others our faith and apply it to what's happening in this world. Our hope is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the one who will return someday to judge the world. And he is the, also the one who gave his life for us on the cross to make sure that when that judgment day comes, we will be ready to stand before God and enter into glory with our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This would be the time of the service when we would receive our offering. That is not possible, and so if the Lord moves you to do so, uh, you may send your offerings to Redeemer Lutheran Church at 1054 Truman Avenue, Owatonna, Minnesota 55060, or make an online donation at RedeemerOwatonna.org. We join together in singing our offertory. Be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. In our special prayers today, we will include a prayer for Shelley Demmel, who is the daughter of Ardella Schmidt and sister of Steve Schmidt. All indications are that the Lord is getting ready to call Shelley home to heaven soon. We'll also include a prayer for Mert Grabau. Mert will be celebrating his 93rd birthday tomorrow, Monday, May 18th. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal, and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we praise and bless you that you did not spare your own Son, but gave him up for our sins and raised him for our redemption. Most merciful Savior, Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for your triumphant resurrection through which you have abolished death and purchased for us an inheritance in heaven that is incorruptible, undefiled, that never fades away. O Holy Spirit, we praise and glorify you. By your grace, the treasures won for us by Jesus are imparted to us and to all Christians. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, cause the glad tidings that we celebrate today to be told to the ends of the earth. Comfort us with the assurance that our sins are sealed in the grave where Jesus lay, and that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Withdraw our hearts from earthly desires and affections so that as pilgrims and sojourners on this earth, we may hasten forward to our inheritance in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace to trust you during this time of distress. In your mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief and healing to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Sustain our health care workers, emergency responders, law enforcement officers, government officials, and researchers. Give them strength and protect them from harm as they work to care for us and maintain order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and cause your people to respond with care and compassion to all who are affected by this catastrophe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you alone make the decisions about life and death. We ask you to show mercy to your servant, Shelley Demmel, whose death seems near. 
If it is your will, restore her and lengthen her days on this earth. But if not, keep her in her baptismal grace and your abiding care. Give her a repentant heart, firm faith, and a lively hope. Do not let the fear of death cause her to waver in confidence and trust. And at your chosen time, grant her a peaceful departure and a joyous entrance into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your blessing, O Lord, to Mert Grabau, to whom you have granted length of days in this earthly life. Bless him as he celebrates his 93rd birthday tomorrow. May he always know your loving kindness, abide in the confession of your care and protection, and in all things give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. While we live, direct us in all our ways, and when we die, give us the crown of life, that with all the angels and saints we may praise and glorify you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in another portion of our liturgy, the Sanctus, holy, holy, holy. in the highest. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a song of praise from our liturgy. Thank the Lord and sing his praise tell everyone what he has done let everyone who seeks the lord rejoice and proudly bear his name he recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanks giving alleluia alleluia The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, He is a Risen, Glorious Word.
reconciled is God my Lord. The gates of heaven are open. My Jesus did triumphant die, and Satan's arrows broken lie, destroyed hell's fiercest weapon. Oh, hear what cheer! Christ victorious, rising glorious, life is giving. He was dead, but now is living. Go in peace, serve the Lord.